In this video, we take a look at object-oriented programming basics, specifically focusing on objects and attributes. So object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm that focuses on objects. Maybe you're looking into it, but you may be asking, what does that mean when it uses objects? Well, an object is anything that represents a real-world object. And each object has a variety of characteristics. Now, in today's example, we're going to be using dogs. Each dog, which is an object, has a set of characteristics. Now, in a standard program, we could use variables to hold data about the dogs. Well, how would you hold information about the dogs in object-oriented programming? Don't you have to use variables? We use what is called attributes, and they are different from variables. Let's take a look at how they're different. So variables in procedural programming can hold one value. We can, of course, create an array, but now that can be a little tricky, trying to remember which index refers to which dog. Now, of course, I would also need variables to hold each characteristic about the dogs. I can do this in object-oriented programming, but by creating attributes. A characteristic describing each dog is known as an attribute, and these attributes go into a separate class. Well, why would I even need to put them in a different class? Well, a class with attributes, the characteristics describing the object, it's a template for an object. The class is made by use of abstraction. Well, what in the world is that? Well, Dogs can have thousands of characteristics, but our program may not require all of those. Abstraction simplifies the real-world objects, only requiring the attributes or characteristics that the programmer wants. Here's an example. If a dog breeder uses object-oriented programming to keep track of their customers, there may be some information they do not need to know about. For example, they don't need to know the customer's blood type. That has nothing to do with purchasing a dog. They don't need to know the customer's height. They don't need a list of their phobias. They don't need how they celebrate holidays. They don't need those traditions. That has nothing to do with purchasing a dog. So abstraction is when the characteristics that matter to a user or programmer is used. So let's take a look at some examples. Here, we have an object. The object is the dog itself. It needs a name. So we're calling this dog right here, this dog one. What are some attributes or characteristics of this dog? Well, he has a name and his name is Albus. He has a breed. He is an Australian Shepherd and he has an age which is three years old. So this object, this dog one has its own name its own breed, its own age. If these were variables, I would need to create a separate variable for each object. When I'm creating attributes for an object, I create them one time and each object is tied to its own name, its own breed, its own age. Let's take a look at another object. So here is another object of a dog. We're calling this one, this dog too, but it has its own attributes that is shared inside the dog class. It also has a name, and this dog's name is Tonks. It has its own breed, which is Australian Shepherd, and it has its own age, which is also three. Let's take a look at another object using the same dog class. So here we have this dog. This is dog three, and dog three, this object, has its own name, which is Luna, it has its own breed, which is a Border Collie mix, and it has its own age, which is 15. So using procedural programming, I need variables for each dog. Using object-oriented programming allows me to use the same attributes multiple times. Each object I create has its own name, its own breed, its own age. I can reuse the template, the dog class, each time I create a dog object. I can add as many dog objects as I want without having to add another set of variables for another dog. If I wanted 50 dog objects, I only had to code the attributes once using object-oriented programming. 
50 dogs in procedural programming would require 150 variables because we have name, we have breed, and we had age, or I'd have to keep resizing the array of each characteristic every time I wanted to add a new dog, and then I got to try to keep track of what index reference what. That makes it very, very inefficient uh, when I'm going to update my code. So there's some specialized vocabulary you will see when you're using object-oriented programming. The first one is going to be object. And remember, an object is representing an object in the real world. You'll also hear the term class. It's a template used to create an object. Code can be reused for each object created. You're not having to write new code. Then we have people talk about an instance of a class. Well, if you're new to object-oriented programming or programming in general, you may not know what that means. That just means an object creating using the attributes of a specific class. It's the instance or object created from a class. So in our example, this dog one, this dog two, and this dog three, those are instances of the dog class. Instantiation of an object may be something else you hear. This is a creation of an object using a class. You may also hear what's called instance variables. Now, these are another name for the attributes of an object. They're not standard variables. You have instance variables, which refer to the instance of a class. So an object using uh, attributes. And the last one you'll hear is abstraction. This is simplifying the amount of attributes for an object. Now, this is what you're going to hear when you start doing object-oriented programming. There are more advanced topics that we'll get to into later in another video. So attributes and code, what would that look like? So in Python, it would look like this. You have your own class, which we call dog, and then it has the attributes or the characteristics such as name, breed, and age. Then you have something in Java that would look just like this. You have private, and you would use private because that means it can only be accessed from within the class itself. And you can uh, access them through set and get methods, which we've covered in another uh, video. But here we have the uh, constructor assigning the name, the breed, and the age. And then in VB, this is what it would look like using the keyword private as well. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. We'll see you guys in the next video.